good writing too, isn't it? Not bad writing, that. No, it's writing. And uh, this is from me. Oh, Tom. <laughs> Morning. Hiya. Morning. And uh, happy birthday, Uncle Albert. Thank you. We're just opening our presents. Uh -huh. Oh, I've got a scarf and all. No, there's not much you haven't got, is there? Now, I thought it'd keep you warm this winter when you're going down to the Legion. What the hell is a book? Yeah, I don't say you've got a book. <laughs> it's the history of a Lancashire Fusiliers, and you certainly haven't got that. Oh, I said it's random, isn't it? Yes, your old regiment, Uncle Albert. There'll be a few names and places in there that you know very well. Oh, Prince of it on the small side. Yes, but do you like it? Oh, well, if I can read it, I would. Where's my magazine finding that? Oh, it's in your room. I'll get it for you. Never mind. You're not going to fetch it, Kelly, for me. I'll get it. Well, I think he's enjoying his birthday so far. It's a bit hard to tell, isn't it? Why doesn't he have a birthday party? Sure he is. He doesn't know it yet, though. It's a surprise. We can keep a secret, though, can't we, Tracy? Yes. Good yeah. girl. Now, he knows a few people are coming round to have a look at our nice new kitchen, but what he doesn't know is that we've invited some of his mates to celebrate his birthday. When you asked Pam Mitchell if she'd come round, did she say she'd definitely come? Not definitely, no. She said she might drop in. Why? Well, there's something going on at the town hall that my bosses want to keep hushed up. I want it out in the open, and Pam Mitchell is the only newspaper editor I happen to know. Here you are, Ivy. A nice soft-boiled egg. Well, I I'm not really hungry, love. Now, thanks. come on, you didn't eat last night, either. Oh, come on, I stood over that special. Three minutes exactly, just how you like it. Done your bread and butter and all. Well, thanks, love. You're very kind. So's our bedroom. Get it down, mate. Keep your strength up. See you. Oh. You're not going to work today, Mum? No, of course she's not. Well, it might be a good idea. It'll take your mind off things. No, I can't face it, Brian. I've got questions people be asking. How's Bert? I, you know... Yeah, well, they won't be asking me. Look, I know they will, Mum, but, um... Well, what am I going to say to them? I mean, if, if I say he's in hospital, they're going to say what's the matter with him, aren't they? I mean, what am I going to tell them then? I just can't believe it's happened. I can't believe it. Why us? Look, Ivy, I'm not going to work today. I'll ring the cafe and tell them I can't get in. Oh, no, no, love, it's all right. You don't have to stop for me. Brian, you go to work. I, I, I'll be all right. Mum, listen. About me, Dad. You're going to have to tell people sometime. Not now, Brian. No, I want to say this, girl. I don't think it's any good avoiding people. They'll only wonder what's going on. And I honestly think you'd be better off talking about it. Don't bother it up when I get away. I can just hear them now, can't I, Brian, when they do hear about it. How they talk about it. Have you heard about Bert Tilsley? He's gone round twist. He's in a loony bin. That's how people talk, Brian. I mean, I've heard people talk about other people like that. I mean, that's how I... I mean, I've even talked about people myself. God forgive me. Gee, don't they wear some gear, these young brides, eh? Hey, look at this. Well, <laughs> good luck to her if she likes it. Oh, you can't beat a traditional white wedding dress, can you? I mean, with white lace and all this stuff. Cost you a fortune, though, you know. There's a girl lives down our street from me, Linda Morris. It's costing her 400 quid. How much, eh? Yeah. Oh, hey, it's a heck of a lot of money, isn't it? Mm. It must be a wonderful dress. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> She'll only wear it the once, though. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it is the greatest day of a woman's life, isn't it? Yeah. I know it was for me. Been all downhill ever since, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hilda, any sign of uh, Eddie and Marion getting wed? They've been engaged ages now, haven't they? Ah, oh, well, they're saving up, you see, because they want to have everything just right when they get married. Mm. You know, deposit on their own home and money for the furniture and that. She's a sensible girl, Marion, isn't she? Mm. Ooh, he's dead lucky, is Eddie. <laughs> oh, aye, Eddie's lucky. Mind you, I wouldn't call Marion sensible. I mean, she's no chicken, is she? If it were me, which, God forbid, seeing who the bridegroom is, I'd have him down at that church tomorrow and tell with furniture. Oh, uh, well, we're not all like you, you know. Any road has for getting a fella to the altar. Well, you're hardly the one to give advice, are you? Never having managed it. Oh, well, I can see why you'd be in no rush for Eddie to get wed. How do you mean? Well, let's face it, Hilda. Marion will be gaining a husband and you'll be losing a lodger. The money he pays will make a big difference to you. Luke, I treat that lad more like a son than a lodger. I only want what's best for him. Any road, when he does get married, I can easily get another lodger, no mm. danger. With many, one glad of a good billet. Mm. I won't mind another lodger. You get fed up with TV and radio for company. You need something human. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's why uh, Hilda wants a lodger. She's stuck with Stan. Hey, you just shut up about Stan. So were you. Heard you call him a lot worse than that. Well, I'm entitled. He's my husband. 
Hey, Betty, that were a nice young chap. You had lodging with you that time. You know, that electrician. Ah, oh, young Alec, yeah. yeah. Had a card from him last week. Down south now, you know. Mm. I'd tell you he's looking for digs at the moment. Oh. Larry, uh, what's his name? He mentioned it the other night. Uh, isn't he a joiner? You know, didn't his wife leave him? Any road, he's looking for digs at the moment. I think I know who you mean. Uh, doesn't he, don't he like a drink? Oh, aye. Soap it out of a sweaty cloth. Oh, Not a bad no. chap, though. I don't want him as a lodger. No, he's too old. Mm. Give over, he's only about your age. That's what I mean. I don't get you. Ah, oh, well, it doesn't do, you see. It's all to do with being different age groups. You see, it was all right, Betty, having that young chap for a lodger, but when it's somebody your own age, mm. oh, no, it doesn't do. I mean, it's like you and Alf Roberts. No wonder people talk. Mm. Yeah, don't worry me if they do. I bet it worries Alf. The pair of you both single, living in that house together, same age group. We are not in the same age group. Alf, she is older than me. Give over. No, that's why you get wagging tongues. Look, I don't care what folk wag or how fast. Listen, she's got a point, love it. They are talking about you and Alf. And it's all to do with age, you see. I see the cleaning has come to a dead stop, Mrs Ogden. Your discussion must be of absorbing interest. Well, I was just saying, Mrs Walker, that when you've got a lodger in the house, there's a right way and a wrong way. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, nobody knows that better than you do. What on earth do you mean? Well, I mean, you've got Fred G lodging with you, haven't you? But you're never here. He is not a lodger. He is an employee who lives on the premises. It is totally different. Yeah, well, the point I'm trying to make is, Mrs Walker, that, uh, well, you never hear anybody hint... I mean, you've never heard any talk about Fred and Mrs Walker, have no, you? No, no, no. Talk? What kind of talk? Well, like with Bat and Alf Roberts. And it's to do with being different age groups, you see. I mean, nobody talks about you and Fred. I mean, you being old enough to be... <coughs> <coughs> well, him being, like, Mrs Ogden. Will you kindly stop this stupid chatter at once and get on with your work? Hilda, you were close to death then. Mm. Morning. Oh. Morning, love. Um, have you got any of them um, paper serviettes? Oh, yes, I think so. Yes, here we are. Oh, great. Right. And uh, have you got some birthday cake candles as well? Oh, now then. No, no, we should have. Something tells me you're having a birthday party. Not little Tracy, is it? No, it's Uncle Albert. He's 88 today, would you believe? Oh, 88? Oh, isn't that amazing? I mean, when you think of all the changes he's lived through. Yeah. I mean, just imagine when Mr Tatlock was born, Queen Victoria was on the throne. And now he's 88, she's back as Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you something, I don't fancy hanging around till I'm 88. Hey, Uncle Albert enjoys himself, you know. Well, that's it, isn't it? If you're still enjoying yourself, that's all right. What do you mean, if you're still enjoying yourself? You haven't even started enjoying yourself, Label. And if you want my opinion, you're leaving it a bit late. Oh, taking a notice, Mavis. Hey, listen, um, this party we're having isn't just for Uncle Albert, you know. It's as much to celebrate our alterations as anything else. So uh, if either of you two feel like dropping in for a drink, you're very Thank welcome. You very much. Oh, here we are. Birthday cake candles. I knew there was somewhere, but, well, I doubt if we've got 88. Oh, I don't want that many, love. I mean, when you get to that age, it's enough to be blowing the one out, isn't it? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Tatlow. Good morning. Yes. How do you mean? Well, I was waiting for you to order. Well, I'm waiting for you to say somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Tatlock, my appetite for conundrums and riddles is not what it was. Well, it's my birthday today. I thought you were going to say, I will drink. I shall say, many happy returns of the day. Well, I was going to buy you a drink tomorrow. It's your birthday, isn't it? Day after mine. You know, there's nothing wrong with your memory. No, no, there isn't. And I know how old you are, too. If you don't believe me, I... I do believe you, Mr Tatlock. Now, you must have a run with me, a large one. And we'll say no more about it. Right. Um, I'll just have a quick off. <laughs> oh, in a rush, are you? Yes, I am. But I specially found time to come and see you. I'll try the lucky girl. Well, you know what I'm after. How about it? How about what? You know what I'm talking about, you and me. Have oh, you seen the place? I've asked you straight. Oh, come on, bet it was just what you wanted a couple of weeks ago. Yes, it was. Well, that's what I'm offering. All you have to do is to say yes. That's it. 
Des. Don't rush me. I'm thinking about it. Oh, Bets. What have you got to lose? That's what I'm thinking about. She's desperate to get a fella. Mm. I'd shoot myself if I was like that. <laughs> Very keen. Keen of the nerve. <laughs> Don't let her kid you. She'd go after anything in trousers. <laughs> Let's the street down, if you ask me. I didn't ask you, did I, Hilda? How's young Brian? Oh, I'm OK, thanks. Um, I'll have a pint, please, and a pie when you got chips. OK, Doc. Yeah. How's your man, Brian? My mum? Why? Well, uh, I thought she looked a bit under the weather last night. You know, getting out of your van with that suitcase. She's OK. Bad up. Thank you. I've not seen your dad around for a day. Is he all right? He's fine. Everybody's fine. Hello. Oh, it's Rowan. Come in. Hello, oh, Jack. Your Bert turned up. I popped in yesterday. The girl said you went to pick him up. Down Bristol Way, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, good. Well, he's all right, I take it. No, no, he's not. Well, well what's, all, what's all this then? Didn't you bring him back? No, he can't come back home, Mr. Baldwin. He's, uh, he's not well enough. Well, what's the matter? Has he been in some kind of accident or something? Uh, no, 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 it's not. Uh... Look, Ivy, I want to help you all I can. I'll do everything I can to help you, but you've got to put me in the picture. He's, uh not left home, is he? No, no, not like you think, Mr. Rowan. It's, um, he's in hospital and um, the doctor's saying it's treatment. It's, um, it's his mind. You, you trying to tell me that he's mentally ill? Oh, blimey. Well, that's a bit of a shaker for you, isn't it? I just don't know what to do, Mr. Baldwin. Well, this hospital, I mean, what's it like? Uh, do they give the impression that they know what they're doing? Yeah, well, the doctors were very kind. Everybody was very nice, really, you know, and they said they're doing everything they possibly can for him. He's, yeah, um... but did they say he was going to get better? Yes. Yes, he said he probably will get better, but, um... Well, they've warned me it's going to be a long job. Yeah. Well, at least there's hope. I mean, things could be worse, couldn't mm -hmm. they? How could it be worse, Mr. Baldwin? Well, it was worse when you didn't know where he was, wouldn't it? Eh? I mean, at least you know he's alive, he's in the best possible hands. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, look, uh, if you want any time off to go and visit him or anything, uh, let me know. I'm sure we can sort something out. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Baldwin. It's no good moping, you know, Ivy. Best thing you could do is to get back to work. I could do with you back over there, cracking the whip over those girls. No, I can't, Mr. Baldwin. I can't face people. I can't face telling them. <laughs> They'd all be on your side, you know. No, Mr. Baldwin, promise me. Don't say anything about Bert, please. I promise you. They won't hear anything about it from me. Albert up. What time have you invited people for? Oh, I said any time after half past five. Well, it's about that now, so we might as well wake him out, ain't right. Oh, sorry, I'll go. You have a nice sleep, Uncle Albert. I wouldn't do sleep. I would have done with rest oh, in my hello. eyes. Come on in. Go hello. 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 <laughs> hello. 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 Ah, to your birthday party. Birthday party? Ah. Yeah. I'm not having one. Oh, yes, you are. It's a surprise for you. Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me? I could have got ready. Nay, hey, Albert, when you get as old as us, you're ready for out. How old are you then, Albert, now? 88. 88. That's cluggy enough for a bit, isn't it? Since so. 80. And I'll tell you this, you're looking a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better, too. Yeah, well, I hope you lads have brought your appetites with you anyway. Oh, don't worry, love. We can shift anything that you put in front of us. Good. It's all ready. I'll just go and put kettle on. Lovely. 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 Well, seeing as how my birthday, what have you brought me for a present? I suppose you've forgotten that. Oh, we haven't forgotten. Me and Tommy have got this between us for you. A little bottle of it. Oh, well, I hope we're not too late. I do. Good old man. Oh, well, eventually. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Many happy returns. Thank you. 
a little present for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you see, somebody doesn't need reminding. And here's another happy birthday, Mr. Tuffman. Thank you. <laughs> Right, now, what are we all having to drink? There's tea for those who like tea, oh. and there's beer for those who like beer. Bi beer. beer. Hello, love. Good work. I'm not due until 8 o'clock. No, as a matter of fact, I'm meeting somebody for an hour or two. There's Foster. Put your face straight, it's not what you think. Oh, give over. I'm broad-minded, you know that. Mostly. Listen, Alf, between us, he's left home. Has he? He's walked out and he's got himself a flat. I'll be able to tell you definite later tonight. But it looks like I'm going to make your wildest dreams come true. I'm not with you. Well, if I move in with Des like he wants me to, you'll have your home all to yourself again. Look, you've no need to move out. I won't put any pressure on. You can stop here. I know, I know. But it looks like it's going to be the best thing all round, doesn't it, love? I don't know. If you think you're doing the right thing, some good will come of it. But I don't know. I've just got a feeling you're being a fool to yourself. Hello, Hello Norman. Hello. Come in. A present for my dad. Oh, go on in. Thanks. <laughs> Oh. oh, it's a party you're having, oh, is it? Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello Dad. Happy birthday to you, Dad. Uh, all you wish yourself, Albert? Oh. I see, we weren't asked then. His own flesh and blood, but not asked to his birthday party. Yeah, well, it's not really a party, Beatty. It's more of a, a get-together to celebrate the alterations. Oh, yes, and what's that? An Accrington break? <clears throat> yeah, well, you're here now anyway, Beatty, so have a drink. Beer, Norman? Aye, go on. No, go on. thank you. If we'd been wanted, we'd have been invited. I'll not stop where I'm not wanted. Uh, oh, you, you're very welcome, both of you. Norman, come along. You don't know, but put a damper on it anyway. Oh, hell. I'm always putting my foot in it with Beatty. I'm sorry, Kim. Oh, forget it, love. You may have noticed that Beatty seems to enjoy being hard put to. You know, she thrives that on it. Oh, well, there, that's the cake cut. Oh, I'll hand it round yeah, now, yeah, shall I? Oh, there you are. Would you oh, like a piece, Mr... Um... Call me Wilfred. Oh. I haven't seen you before, sorry. have I? Uh, well, I... I... I think I've seen you in Rosamond Street oh, in the cabin. I work there. Thanks, do you ever do any dancing at all? Uh, yes, I can dance. Only I've been wondering, how, would you, how are you fit for going to a, 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 a you know, an old-time night? Don't bother with him, baby. She's married. Oh. Married. Oh, oh <laughs> you miserable tale-telling git you are. Hello, Pam. Hello. Come in. What would you like to drink? Oh. I'll have a beer. Right. right. Ken, like Pam wants a beer, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, you've done wonders with this room. It's got a good feeling. Oh, we were quite pleased with it. <clears throat> there you are, a beer. Uh, I didn't think you weren't coming. Uh, I've got something important I want to talk to you about. Well, are you liking being on your own, then? Well, I'm hoping I won't be on my own for very much longer. You don't fool me, you know. You just want somebody to wash your socks. <laughs> no, that's not what I want you for, Bet. And I do want you. Do you? Yeah, of course I do. Why do you think I left home? Oh, come on, Beck, don't keep me on pins. We've got a life to live together. So move in here and let's get started. All right. I'll move in tomorrow. <laughs> Great. Let's have a drink to that. We'll be happy here. Yeah? You and me. Yeah. I think we will. Mind you. Took your time making your mind up. I thought you'd gone off me. Of course I hadn't gone off you, love. I just wanted to be very sure you were being straight with me. Yeah. Do us. Do us. It's precisely the sort of thing you should be exposing. I suppose the council's attitude would be that they're short of money. Oh, yeah, sure, what council isn't. Yeah, I mean, there is an economic problem, but the thing that really infuriates me is the crafty underhand methods that they're using. Have I got this right? They're planning, on the quiet, to close two, possibly three of these youth clubs? Well, that's what it amounts to, yes, and to justify the closures, they're fabricating figures to show that the clubs aren't being used. I would have thought kids today needed youth clubs more than ever. Oh, absolutely, yes, the alternative of half them not having jobs is hanging around street corners and getting into trouble. So, how do the council plan to make out these clubs aren't wanted? Well, I've already started messing around with the opening hours. You know, kids turn up and they're shut. Uh, or there's no equipment. Such as what? Well, in the simplest way, you turn up for a game of table tennis, there's no net and one squash ping pong ball. So you go somewhere else instead, and then eventually you don't go back at all. Yeah, I get the idea. Then they send out some figures showing the youth clubs aren't being used, and then they close them. I could just fancy a drop of rum now, Albert. 
Ah, come on, Albert. What about taking this off of that bottle? No, it's only half a bottle, and it's my present. Ah, but we bought it. It's not for your, it's good for your stomach and a drop of rum. A mind griping me right now. That's all to that fool you've got. To. <laughs> this is more or less how I'd want to have it if I had a house. I mean, not that I need a house with me being on my own, but I've always thought I'd like to have a sort of a family room where you could, you could cook and you can eat and... You know. <laughs> mm, yes, I mean, there doesn't seem much point in having a separate dining room these days, unless there are children, say, and they need somewhere to study. Uh. Mm. She's very chic, isn't she? Yes. Is, um, is Ken going to write an article for the newspaper? Well, I'm not sure. I just know it's something he's steamed up about. Oh. I hope you're going to do a story. Well, yes, I will, so long as I can quote you. No, there's no way you can quote me, Pam. It's more than my job's worth, I'll be out of my ear. I can't do a story without facts to back it up or quotes from somebody that'll stand it up. Oh, you're the news hound, that's your department. Well, I'll do my best. I might need your help. You'll get it. Yeah, hey, sunshine. The doctor said get as much of that down as you can. Cheers. It's quiet tonight, isn't it? They call them that are coming out of... Come out. I'll tell you what. Well, you get off home if you like. I can manage here for the last half hour. I don't think Mrs. Walker would like that. Well, she won't know, love. She's gone to bed with a hot drink and Lady Antonio friend. <laughs> See, oh, well, I better make me tracks then. You're a bright little soul. What are you up to? Tell you tomorrow. Gee, yeah, I'll go and get me things. Ah, my kindly landlord. What are you drinking? Her uh, pint, please. It's on me. And if you play your cards right, in fact, even if you play them wrong, I might treat you to a bag of chips on me, Claus. Oh, celebrating so much, are we? Tomorrow, you get your spare bedroom back. And thanks, Alf, for pouring it on me. You've been a good one. So you're moving in with Jess Foster? That's right. Like they say, the rest of my life starts here. Mm. I've, uh, I've just been having a drink in that little pub back at Town Hall with an old mate of mine, Billy Compton. You know, he knows everything that's going on in and out of the Town Hall. Well, go on. So Des left home on your account, did he? Well, I didn't twist his arm, if that's what you're thinking. I didn't egg him on. He made his own decision that that was what he wanted. Mm. Well, according to Billy Compton, it was a bit different to that, love. In what way? His wife gave him his marching orders. He didn't walk out, he was chucked out. on what's going on on Plus, Men and Motors or Granada Breeze, why not check out our websites at www.gsb.co.uk. After the break, Emmerdale. <laughs>